but I will give you fair warning. Do not get this stuff on your skin. You guys are almost looking like you're ready to do something. Because we are. You're in here doing soap. You got all that going on? Yep. All right. Good morning, beautiful people. I have four of the five. We're going to do something fun today. That's why they're all like clamoring to come with me. We're digging potatoes today. We, uh, we had a little bit of the, uh, the fungus get in our potatoes, bug damage, all that. So we've got some that we're going to get out of the ground. And Brett, how'd you put it? Oh, there he is. He was grabbing a pitchfork. See, he's ready. How'd you put it? What's digging potatoes like? Digging gold. It's like digging gold. So I've already pulled up. There's one. I guess I'll just talk. It's been a minute, guys. Hi. Long time no see. So this bed was doing great. And then due to a slight bit of neglect, I let the uh, little potato grubs get out of control. Uh, let's see if we can find any. Uh, yeah, here's one. That's a potato beetle right there. That right there. So the, the beetle will lay eggs. The eggs hatch. You have tiny little caterpillar things. Uh, the caterpillars do that. Destroy the entire plant. They go down in the ground. They pupate. They come out as a beetle. The life cycle continues. But it's not any help for us. So I'm sure as we're digging these up, we will find plenty of pupating bugs and I'll make sure I toss them over here to the chickens. Look, we've already got one sitting here. She's like, come on, quit talking, feed me. Like I said, these did pretty good um, until the bug damage happened. And once the bug damage happened, they, uh, they just had a hard time. Uh, you can see these ones over here. I've got different varieties. Like I don't remember where I planted. If you guys remember those who were watching a few months ago, I found a box of old potatoes from last year that I had forgotten about and they were all sprouting. So that's what we used for seed potatoes this year. And while I was planting, it's like, okay, well, here's some reds. Here's some russets. Here's some, I think down there, I think there's some purples, if I'm not mistaken. We'll find out when we dig up. I was hoping these would go a little bit longer, maybe get a little bit bigger, but we got to act now. One of the things about all the rain that we get out here and the humidity is we get fungus really bad. Um, so that can decimate. Um, this kind of looks like potato blight, which, I mean, fungus is a blight, right? So, let's get started. Now remember how deep these are? Yeah. So we're gonna go way out here and just start loosening. And then we're gonna start trying to pull the plants out. See, that's not looking good. They're just gonna fall off. There's one. All right, we'll see how we do. There's our first row. Not too bad. She's eating the potatoes. Set her down for a second and she just, yeah, you're filthy dirty. And she's just happy. She's at the point now, if we bring her outside, as soon as we take her inside, we have to give her a bath. So the other day she got like four baths in a day. Like a, no joke. It's all right. She's loving life. So there's our first row of potatoes. Not real crazy, but as a, uh, Tyler, he is our meat and potatoes guy. He said, oh yeah, those potatoes are just fine. Now, one of the nice things is I've got potatoes over here and those are actually doing fine. There is a little bit of blight starting down there, but we're gonna leave those a little bit longer. Uh, I've got potatoes way farther down that came up volunteer and uh, they 
started blooming, so that means we're getting close. But these, these have never bloomed, so I don't know, maybe they're not ready. They're dying faster than they're growing now, so it's time to tear them out. Let's keep plugging along. I'm gonna set you guys up on time lapse, uh, and I'll get back with you guys when we're done. All right, so these ones over here, those are russets and, oh, those are yellow potatoes, guys. Those are just oh. Yukon Golds. So we had some russets that we planted and that's how big they are. Those plants haven't been struggling with the disease and bug pressure like the red potatoes have. And obviously we have a lot of red potatoes. I think we're probably pushing 20 pounds. It's not that great, but I'll take it. I've never had luck growing potatoes and still have some learning to do, but I'm pretty happy with this haul. This is pretty cool. And I still have potatoes in various places, so we're looking pretty good. So what do you guys think? Is this fun? I yeah. love digging potatoes. This is a blast. Potatoes are one of the funnest things to grow. You just keep burying them and they're super easy until you get bugs. Uh, but yeah, like I'm pretty happy. That's a that's a great haul. Yeah. Thank you guys for uh, your help. Even though I know this was more of a fun thing that you've been waiting for. We're gonna go get a weight, see how we did. Mind you, there's potatoes there. There's potatoes down there. We've got a few more here and there, but this is all we're doing today. So let's go wham. Okay, we're all zeroed out. Wow, up to four. All right, I'm gonna say that's it on the first bucket. All right, so that's 27 pounds. Uh, call that five and a half. That's a lot of potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. Yeah. Two, almost two pounds of yellows and four russets. All right, cool. I'd say we're at 35 pounds of potatoes for a 20 foot bed and there was three rows and there's still more out there. I still have a 12 foot bed of two rows. And then volunteers. And then volunteers that have come up. Sweet. Oh, sorry boys. Your closet has been commandeered. I haven't even finished our closet yet, but now it's gonna be potato storage. We're gonna eat through them pretty fast. I mean, 35 pounds of t potatoes. Uh, we can eat 50 pounds in a month, no problem. So this is a couple meals. It's all good. It's just cool to have our own potatoes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna figure out how to stack the rest on here. I have another piece of hardware cloth and some bricks. Tiny house, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, we got airflow. That'll work. All right, that was fun, that was good. Um, I'll get that bed rototilled, I think. I mean, we're at the end of June right now. I think I can plant cold weather stuff, get that going. I gotta look at my chart. I have a chart uh, all stapled together. It's hung up on the fridge, but it's got my planting schedule and everything. On the note of garden, I've never done this before, mainly because I've never had the stuff to do it. Something that I'm getting into is fertilizers and various things like that. I am playing around with comfrey tea. I'll walk down here and show you some comfrey. Some viewers sent us some comfrey roots. We planted them. They are just going bonkers. So I'm going to make comfrey tea out of them. I'll show you guys how I've been doing it. I've got some in that bucket already ready. I'm going to use this bucket and start another batch. Super simple. Just need a clean bucket. This had apple cider vinegar in it and I washed it out and scrubbed it real good. Uh, it's clean. I don't imagine the vinegar would be that good for plants, but nice clean bucket. All right, so here is comfrey. I had to watch like five videos to like finally get exactly what, why it's so beneficial. Comfrey has a super deep tap root. It's a deep miner. Um, it will pull up stuff 
from way deep down, bring it up, it goes into its leaves. You then either chop and drop the leaves, add the leaves to your compost pile, or make tea out of them. And nutrients that were unavailable to other plants are now available through the composting or mulching of this plant. So uh, I have already been making compost tea or comfrey tea out of this, and it's amazing. Everything that has gotten the tea just looks amazing. Like it's perking up. One of the things that I add on a weekly to bi-weekly basis, depending on if I forget it, is I use uh, fish fertilizer. It's basically fish poop and kelp. I apply that foliar, which means you spray it on the leaves, let it soak in. Um, so when I do that, I just add some comfrey tea to my, my sprayer and everything is loving it. So let me get, get a cut and I'll show you. You almost wouldn't believe that I hacked this plant down to almost nothing three weeks ago. There you go, okra. You know you were in there. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go rob another couple plants. So I hacked these two about that much, probably three weeks ago. And not only have they recovered, they have gone above and beyond in their recovery. Apparently, robbing a few leaves doesn't hurt it at all. It seems like it's coming back with a vengeance. So, I'll just keep making tea until fall comes and these things go dormant. I guess they don't go dormant. They die back, but then the roots come back the next year. So really, I just want this bucket crammed full. I'm not real, like, concerned like getting a certain amount. I just go full bucket and call it good. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. So that's just about a full bucket. It's packed pretty tight. It's got some weight to it. And then literally all you do, fill this up with water. It's literally that easy. You fill it up with water. I put a loose fitting lid so it can kind of breathe, uh, but keep bugs and stuff out of it. And then you let it sit in the sun for three weeks, however long you want. You can let it sit all year if you want. But I will give you fair warning. Do not get this stuff on your skin. It is the stinkiest, oh. It smells like liquid pig poop. Like it is one of the stinkiest things. I was using the other stuff the other day and I got it on me and like I had to go change my clothes. It's just, it's bad. Call it good. Let me go find a lid. I'm just actually gonna leave this out here in the garden because this is where it's gonna need to be. And that's pretty much it. Some people like to put rocks and heavy stuff to keep everything submerged. But as it sits here in the sun, everything wilts and it's in water. You know what happens to your salad if, you know, it sits in the fridge and gets wet. It turns to slime. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. It's turning to slime. Everything just goes into the water and then you have this giant sloppy greenish goo that's on top. You take that off and I like to strain it, but I strained this one the other day. So this is the one, this one is three weeks old now. I use these because I can pour straight out of here without having, without having to pull the lid off. Whew. So that's it. Phew-wee. Yeah, that reeks. All right, I'm gonna grab the, uh, the sprayer and I'll show you how I mix it up. All right, so this is my fish poo, fish fertilizer that I use. It's Neptune's Harvest. This is also equally stinky pretty thick stuff. Um, I just used my Hudson sprayer. It's a two gallon. This is my precise measuring cup with a Sharpie mark. Use that much. And then with this stuff, uh, it's, it's like a 10 to one ratio. Comfrey tea to 
your water. That comes out to like 24 ounces of this stuff to two gallons of water. Uh, I think that's what it works out to. So this is a 16 ounce jar, so one and a half of these. Ugh, it stinks. One and a half ish. It's not exact here. Let's go fill this up with water. Honestly, the mixture of the two of these smells like hot garbage. Like a, like a garbage can that's been in 110 degree weather out behind a restaurant or something. Like it, it really smells bad. All right, so what can you spray it on? Literally anything you want. Everything I've sprayed this stuff on is just loving life. I spray it on everything in the garden, especially the stuff that looks like it needs it. Basically, you just get your leaves wet and keep going. So the whole garden, I might use two of these. Like it's really not a ton. And I've been doing this once a week and it has just been working wonders. So we'll keep doing it. It stinks down here now. I've got to give it a few hours. Probably by this evening when I come out here to water everything, it'll, it won't be stinking as bad, but yeah. This stuff has saved my bacon. Um, it's really working quite nicely. Um, we'll leave a link for the, uh, the fish fertilizer. We've had good luck with it. The way we are, you know, if it's something we use that we stand behind, whether or not we're aff affiliated with it, we will share because it's always nice to know what other people are using and how they're doing stuff. So this is the stuff that's worked for us. The uh, comfrey tea uh, I've been having good luck with. Thought we'd share, help, help somebody out. If it helps one person out, then it was worth sharing, right? Hi. Okay. Ah! You're editing. editing. I'm gonna go outside and water everything. I got my beneficial nematodes in the mail, so I'll add it to this vlog since it's like, hey guys, here's some stuff that we're doing in the garden. So, I gotta water first, get everything wet, and I have to wait till the sun actually goes down because you can't apply beneficial nematodes in direct sunlight. So, we'll get back to that in a little bit. So, this is my nightly routine. I come out here after dinner, and I get everything watered. The beginning of this season, we were having rain pretty regularly. And I just, you know, it's fine. The rain will water everything. And we had a lot of seeds not germinate. Once I started watering, as you can see, stuff is doing a lot better. We actually have a spaghetti squash that's almost ready to climb over the top of this arch. I'll set the camera up, start watering. So I wish I could uh, take credit for the idea for the nematodes. I've heard of beneficial nematodes, but it was Casey over at Honey Tree Farm that was like, dude, get some nematodes. So basically it's kind of like, 
I guess, I don't know, probiotics for your dirt. Nematodes are something that exists in soil. Uh, they're a beneficial microbe that uh, will find and attack things like larva, uh, Japanese beetle larva, fire ants. Uh, I mean, I could go down the list. I think it's on the, the other, the packages came in. There's a huge list of pests that this stuff will fight. Um, I bought way less than I needed. I didn't actually like read how much I needed. So this is enough for like 600 square feet. That's cute. So I'm gonna use it. Basically you just mix the nematodes up. They're supposed to stay refrigerated. The package wasn't warm, but it also wasn't cold when it got here. So we'll see. But yeah, you just, you water, water it all in. Uh, make sure it's off the leaves and everything's in the soil. And then these little guys go to town and start killing all the little larva and things that like to hatch out and eat our garden. So, Casey, good looking out. Battery's almost dead. Hopefully I can wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys learned something. We'll leave links for the stuff I've used. Um, and then the uh, comfrey. You can find videos all over YouTube. You just type it in, you'll find something. So that's going to do it for me for today. Catch you guys on the next one.